What's up, everybody? We're back. It's phonetically. We're still making jungle. So we've chopped up our breaks. We've made some bass. We've made a 16 bar phrase. We added some pads using some basic uh, MIDI features uh, to create chords. So let's set up a second MIDI track, but this time we're going to bring it in through input A, B. We're going to set up a flex track. We're going to set up a record track, and then we can sample my Dave Smith Tetra as it comes in, and then we can kind of start to mess around with that as audio of its own. We're going to go to our MIDI menu, track two, double click on playback. This we're going to set for MIDI channel 10. Uh, I prefer 9 through 16 on my MIDI channels because the Octatrack sampler channels run on MIDI tracks 1 through 8. <clears throat> Sometimes start getting interference if you're using audio and MIDI on the same channel. So we've got MIDI channel 10 set up. Let's change our default note to C4. We'll just put the note length uh, as infinite. We've got a trigger down. We can see that we're monitoring through A and B, but we're not hearing any audio. So we're going to go to track four. Also probably need to turn the gain up in our mixer menu for A and B. We'll adjust this as we go. You can also use the volume on your synth, obviously. Um, double click playback, we're going to select a flex machine, loop, slice, time stretch, turn all of it off. <clears throat> we are going to double click on this. You can see I've already selected recording buffer four. Um, so if you go through your flex uh, sample slots, it'll show you all of the samples you've loaded. And if you go up from there, it's going to show you your recording buffers for your different tracks. Um, it's going to show you how much free memory you have. Um, and then it'll also show you the size of your samples. Um, so we're going to select recording four for track four. I could select six, seven, eight. It doesn't matter, but it seems logical to choose track four. Track four, recording buffer four. We're going to hit function record to go into our recording setup. We're going to take off input C and D so that we're only recording from A and B. Uh, record length, one pattern is 64 steps, so we're just going to put that at 64 steps. We're going to turn loop on or off. <clears throat> and if we put down a trig while we're in our recording setup, that is going to set up our, uh, it's going to trigger the recording. If I hit play, you can see the plus sign. You can see the plus sign as we're recording. Um, you can also see that we're clipping if we're looking at our monitor. So let's bring that gain back down. <clears throat> Go back to our recording. edit, we can go into our sample menu, and there we'll see what we record. So the reason we're not hearing that on the playback is because we haven't put down a playback trig. So once we're out of our record menu, exit out, and then we put down a playback trigger. Playback. So if we look, we can see that we're playing back and recording at the same time. <clears throat> uh, this could be a good thing or it can be not what you want. So if we go back into our record menu, we still have a trig down, which means that every time it cycles through the pattern, it's going to start recording again. We have our 
we have our pattern and we just want to record it once. We want to get one take and then stop recording. So when we play. <laughs> So we've turned off the record. We still have. So this is going to be boosted by plus 12 by default, which is uh, it's pretty loud in the mix. So let's start playing with some of the arpeggiator options. Uh, I showed you some LFOs and MIDI controls in the last video, but we didn't really talk about the arpeggiator. So if we turn it on, uh, so mode off. If we use C encoder, this will start selecting the different arpeggio modes. So. That's pretty intense right away. So let's slow this speed down a little bit. Go back to our chords. Let's add a seventh. So this will just be a basic power chord. I'm also just going to go back and mute everything else so that we can uh, listen to what we're doing a little bit better. Let's um, play around with some of the arpeggio modes. And then we can play around with the note length also, which is going to control the length of the actual um, notes in our arpeggio sequence. Um, so note length. Obviously, the speed setting. And then range <coughs> is one octave. We can add a second octave. Or even a third octave. And so our arpeggio modes are also, <clears throat> excuse me, going to control how we cycle through our octave ranges. So most of these are going to go uh, lowest octave to highest octave. Let's bring our drums back in so we kind of hear some of those rhythms playing against the beat. So I think that's starting to sound pretty cool. I think, I think that's a lot of fun. What's really cool is because this is an electron device, we can uh, start to parameter lock all of these settings. So if we go to our second measure, we hold our lock. This one can go at speed 10, can have a two octave range, can be in shuffle mode, 
and maybe we start to tighten up that note length. If we go to uh, bar three, let's say we want to speed that up even more. Let's say we want to keep that three octave range, but we just kind of go up. Let's make those notes longer. <clears throat> and then here, there's also a transpose option. So let's go ahead and use it. <clears throat> we'll go up uh, five semitones. We'll do that. Um, we'll drop it down to two octaves. We'll leave the mode at random. And then, yeah, tighten up the notes just a little bit. And let's play that back, see what it sounds okay. like. Let's start moving that around. So let's uh, take that off the first beat. Let's put that there. Um, and then let's, uh, let's just kind of get random with it. Um, we can play that back here, pitch it up on that step. We can Put one here and slow the rate down just at the end of that bar. to the delay effect, putting a little delay on. So send the bass and width that basically acts as a bandpass filter for your delay, controls what you're going to be, um, what's actually going to be uh, delayed. Uh, feedback, not going too crazy. Time, I think it defaults to 48. We'll, we'll leave it there. So we've got that. We're on pattern one. Let's go to pattern two. This is where we had uh, all of our samples pitched up by a third. Let's go to our first page. So let's start there. Start there. Plus three. Let's go to our third page. We'll do this, but let's put it at a negative rate. So this is going to play back in reverse, pitch it up by three, just because that's what we're doing right now. And maybe we add a little attack to that so that it uh, doesn't come in so quickly. And then what do we finish off with? Let's something we can throw in. So let's do that. We'll just put a trig here. So uh, just drop it down. And what if we re-triggered that? Did kind of a triplet thing. <laughs> Third pattern, let's uh, we'll just place a trig. We'll kind of bring it back to center and then we'll get crazy with it again. Let's do some short little clusters. So I went to the amp page. I'm bringing in the hold and release. And since that's at five and a half, one, two, it means that it should be short enough that there's going to be uh, a little gap between these two trigs. Give us a little staccato playback of our sample. Last pattern, 
we pitched up by five. Let's, let's mess with our filter envelope. So we'll give it a negative depth, we'll add a little attack, and then when this plays back, uh, what we're looking for with the negative filter is kind of a sucking sound. here. Let's go ahead and reverse that one more time. And then let's, uh, let's give this just a bunch of delay here at the end. Let's kind of draw that out a little bit too. That's kind of crazy. I think it's cool. Um, could go back in, edit it. Uh, having it running in the background the entire time is maybe a little much, but um, yeah, we're just getting out. We're just getting out ideas. We're just uh, we're just going as fast as we can, trying to get out as many ideas. So we are going to stop there. We have made some jungle breaks. We have made some jungle base. We have made some jungle pads. But we made an ARP, we resampled it, we put it to some jungle music. <laughs> we're doing it. All right, uh, we're gonna leave off here. Um, I'll probably do a little bit more and show you guys just kind of constructing some scenes so that we can turn this big pattern that's kind of messy and noisy into something with uh, a little more shape. So yeah, now that we've got uh, now that we've got some material and we've got a little 16 bar phrase, we'll do some scenes and then we can start giving a little texture and variety and then we'll just jam out on that for a while once we get it all set up. All right, I um, hope this has been informative, hope you've enjoyed it, and I will catch you next time. Bye.